Okay, we're uh, joined here in the uh, Infield Media Center by today's uh, winning crew chief, uh, Mike Ford. Mike, pr pretty active day out there today. Tell us a little bit about your uh, view from top of the box. Yeah, it was a, that was an extremely long race for us. You know, the the first hundred laps went you uh, went you know pretty eventless. Uh, I knew Denny was was making laps. We're trying to work on our car. Uh, wasn't really pushing the car, um, but uh, made it difficult to adjust knowing that he was he was uh, uh, leaving a little bit out. So um, had to read between the lines there a little bit. But uh, you know you, you get the first half of the race here at Pocono clean. You know the second half is going to get pretty active, and I uh, was real concerned about that. And it it uh, it turned out to be that way. You know all strategies came into play. You had you know, different tire strategies, you had fuel strategies, then you had, had guys on three di different sequences of tires at the end of the day to, to add for, you know, for a pretty eventful end to the race. So uh, track position was key. You know, I think the key for us winning that race was, was two restarts that Denny made when we gave up track position. I think that was the key to us winning the race. And you didn't want to give up track position, but you didn't have a choice. You needed fuel at some point. We're also joined by uh, team owner, Coach Gibbs. Coach, you had uh, you had had a heck of a day the way it was could have had even a better day. Talk a little bit about where the Gibbs organization is uh, now, uh, fourteen races down. Yeah, I, I think what's happened to us, um, our drivers and our teams have done a great job of working together. Uh, as an example, I think here, uh, obviously Denny, this is his favorite racetrack. If you'd have asked Kyle last week, he would have probably rated this the toughest racetrack for him. And Joey, you know very similar statements would probably come from him, but I think they've kind of fed off of Denny and Mike and a crew chiefs you know, on both Zippy and uh, David over there uh, have fed a lot, a lot off the 11 car. And so that's an example of teamwork up here. People lots of times say, well, you got three different cars, but really and truly it takes great teamwork at this level. And so uh, I, now I think it's been Kyle helping at, at some mile and a half stuff has probably helped Denny. Um, and so I think right now both of them have really helped Joey. Uh, Joey, I thought this was probably his best race today, um, you know, and so we were extremely disappointed with what happened there. Uh, but I, I also think right now teamwork has been the key for us, and uh, we've got, um, uh, I think, all three of our guys right now. Um, we're thrilled about where we are now. This can all turn on a dime. We know how pro sports are. And uh, you can you – know, so I'm, I'm never confident. I don't feel like uh, – I don't think anybody on our team feels like we've arrived for sure. It's just right the uh, last seven, eight weeks, we've, we've had a very good seven or eight weeks, and that's hard to do in pro sports. We'll go ahead and open it to questions from the media. Again, as courtesy, please state your name and affiliation, and let me see your hands. Who has questions for these gentlemen? We'll start over here with Paul. Yeah, it's Paul Kaminsky from Motorsports Radio. For Mike, it's always nice to talk to the smartest guy in the room, and you are the smartest guy in the room here talking about how you get to victory lane at Pocono. What was the secret today? Yeah, I think you need to ask someone else because <laughs> I'm definitely not the smartest guy in the room. Um, you know, I think as in a position where we've got a, a good race team um, and, and a confident driver. Um, you know, we, we looked at Pocono and, and where, we're, where we're at in the in the – points and, and so okay you know we're gonna we're gonna look to Pocono to uh to 10 point it you know we had we had our eyes set on winning this race or nothing and uh we called it that way and Denny drove it that way at the end so um you know as far as chase points go we we just took the lead in our eye here so um this was a very important race for us you know we've got confidence coming here to Pocono and you know you know practice the last two days was you know we were close but we weren't we weren't where we thought we needed to be so we had to make some changes and you know, like coach coach said you know you know the three cars unloaded really close to each other and and we fed off each other you know dave learned some stuff from us zippy learned some stuff from us and then we learned stuff from from both of those guys so um you know at the end of the day you you see the fruit from that and that's what's encouraging so um i think i think you're just talking to a guy that was in the right situation Bill Hunnicky, the Trenton Times. For Coach, uh, Joey usually seems like a pretty mellow guy. Right. Were, you, were you surprised at the magnitude of his reaction, and did you get to talk to him afterwards? Well, I, I think you, we, we probably missed the, the fire that's inside of Joey. I mean, 
Um, you know, you're talking about somebody we signed when he was 15, and we've kind of watched him race at different places. I think he does have a real fire. Now, he controls himself. He's, he's somebody that uh, rarely gets out of control, but I definitely think he's got a real passion for what he does. It means a lot to him. I would have said this race was probably his best race. I think uh, Denny is, uh, you know, has helped him a lot here uh, from last year to this year. I thought this was his best race that he drove today, and it was a shame to, you know, to have that taken taken away from him there at the end. So uh, I think it's one of those things right now. They're looking at the video and talking it over. I always lean heavily on the drivers. I'm not, uh, you know, kind of anxious to talk to Joey, and I know they're uh, meeting with NASCAR, so it'll be interesting to see where that uh, shakes out. We're also now joined uh, by today's race winner, driver the number 11 FedEx Freight Toyota, Denny Hamlin. Denny, tell us about your run. We uh, we had a good run. It was a uh, we knew right from the get go uh, that first run uh, when we took the lead early that you know we had a good car. I felt like the track stayed pretty consistent. Our car stayed pretty consistent. You know, there was some stuff that I think going back on it now. You know, when we come back, that will probably change. Uh, you know, to to make our car a little bit better, but we just you know, conserved for most of the day, and I, I rode it on the dash because I knew I was going to have to use it up all I could at the end. Uh, races just don't come easy where you just run first place or third all day and then you get the win at the end. There's always something at the end that uh, that gets a wrench that kind of gets thrown in there and, and messes up your whole plan. So I knew it was going to be important to save everything I could until the very end, and uh, when I needed to get more out of it, I could. This is uh, Denny's fourth victory and sixth top ten in 2010 and Denny's fourth victory uh, here at Pocono Raceway. Denny, Mike Faithful from the Titan Times News. Um, how worried were you when you were 16 laps down and just about 30 laps to go? Well, I mean, we hadn't been past about third uh, all day long, and, and which is relatively clean air. I mean, it's clean air is very, very big at this racetrack. Every position that you gain, it's that much better. Um, so I was fairly nervous because we had had a tight car all day, and uh, we just—I mean—we turned—we turned wrenches on it every time we came on pit road, and uh, you know, so you never know how your car is going to react back there, and especially with 30 to go. But we had no choice; we had to pit when our when it was our fuel window, and other guys were going to try to stretch it. That's kind of how the game plays when when you can't when you don't have a winning car, you got to you know just throw caution in the wind, and those guys are able to do that. We had to play it safe and race the guys that we knew we raced all day and that we're going to have to race for the finish. So I was nervous, but uh, I knew after about three laps when our car was just cutting through traffic unbelievably that uh, you know we, it was just going to be a matter of trying to beat the 18 car or the 29 or what, whoever I was racing that sequence, I had to beat them to the front.